Chapter 5 of The Adventures of Diggledy Dan. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information, or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. The Adventures of Diggledy Dan by Edwin P. Norwood. Chapter 5 in which giraffe gives a chalk talk and the animals learn a new game now when the fourth day had turned to twilight and the animals of spangle land had gathered to continue the meeting that had resulted in the election of lion as president of animals and diggledy dan as secretary zebra announced that he had a matter of much importance to bring to their attention it has to do with giraffe and his folks began zebra as he bobbed his head and flopped his long striped ears in the direction of those to whom he referred as all of us are aware neither giraffe nor any of his ancestors have ever been known to speak when we consider the great amount of talking many of us ofttimes do without really saying much i am sometimes of the opinion that our big-eyed brothers show no little wisdom by preserving strict silence still i feel that giraffe and his family should have a voice in our different discussions if they so desire and think it only fair that they be consulted as to their wishes. While Zebra had been speaking, it was noticed that Giraffe had been all attention and, when Lion from his place in front of all the animals, asked him if he had anything to say, he nodded most positively. Very well then, Giraffe, we will indeed be glad to hear from you, said Lion, as he crossed his paws and leaned back in an attitude of strict attention. By this time, all the eyes of all the animals were on Giraffe, and so were those of Diggledy Dan, who sat astride Hippo, the circus poster spread out before him, his pen poised in midair, ready to jot down any and all things that might come to pass. And, as they watched, Giraffe unfolded his long, lanky legs and, for all the world like two boys on two pairs of tall stilts, made his way from the rear of the group and walked around to the side of Diggledy Dan. Then, Bending his mile-long neck, he thrust his nose into the depths of Dan's pockets. Here, here! cried the clown. There are no carrots there! Silence, Dan! commanded Lion. Even at this moment, Giraffe removed his nose, and there, in the tips of his lips, was the top which, as you may remember, the clown had drawn out when he brought forth the bottle of very red ink. Down went the top on the broad back of Hippo, and back went Giraffe's nose in the pocket of Dan. And, this time, the searcher's ears began to wiggle with delight, and his eyes to twinkle with glee, for when his nose next came forth there, held tight in his mouth, was a piece of bright yellow chalk. At sight of it, a puzzled look crossed the faces of all those who watched. It was Lion who first caught the thought. Why, of course, he exclaimed, with a wise nod of his head, Giraffe proposes to talk with the chalk. With the chalk to be sure, agreed Puma and I know where there's a board. The inner side of the strips that close up my cage are all painted black. Come on, Elephant, and we'll get one right now. So away the two of them went, and soon Elephant was holding the board high up in his trunk, and, as he held it in place, Giraffe wrote with the chalk, Very thoughtful of you. Thanks. Hardly agree with all done thus far, Giraffe. And, putting the chalk alongside the top, he made a low swinging bow with his long spotted neck, and hurried off to his place at the rear of the group, amid the shouts and cheers of his fellows. While the animals were cheering or telling one another just what each had been thinking when Giraffe was rummaging Dan's pocket, the old clown's pen was going scratch, 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 back and forth across the poster. And now, Mr. President, said Dan, as he finished writing and folded up the great sheet of paper, I suggest that we forget business for a time and engage in a game that I have in mind. A fine idea agreed Lion as, indeed, did all the rest in one voice, that is, all but Giraffe and his folks. They nodded their approval. It's a game called London Bridge is Falling Down, went on Dan. It was Giraffe's long neck and elephant's trunk that suggested the thought. So now, suppose we begin. Yes, let's begin, cried the animals, as they trooped into the circle that ran in front of all the red and gold cages. First, called Dan, you, giraffe, and your folks will stand opposite one another, with your noses touching. There, that's the way. Now, elephant, you and your family will do the same. Only raise your trunks very high, and hold them together at the tips, just as if you were shaking hands way up in the air. That's it. Fine. Now all the rest of us will go skipping down the aisle between you. So Dan, 
taking the lead and calling, Come on, tiger! Come on, lion! Hi there, hippo! Away they all went, down through the line. Now back again, shouted Dan, and this is the song that we'll sing as we go. London Bridge is falling down, falling down, London Bridge is falling down, 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 down. Say, hold on a minute, cried Hippo. I'm too wide. I can't get through. I'll fix that, shouted Elephant. Up now, he commanded. And at the words, all of the elephant's folk stood up on their hind legs, and Hippo passed through without any trouble at all. So the game went on, with all the animals vowing that they never had quite so much fun before in all their lives. But by this time, the pedal watch had begun to close, and, at a word from Dan and the promise that he would see them again at half-past twilight on the morrow, the merry band went back to their places. As the old clown passed out of the menagerie tent, he could still hear the voices in the distance humming the song, London Bridge is falling down, 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 down. End of chapter 5. Recording by Valentina Vicelli.